All right, Scott here. Hope you hope you're well. So, what's today? Friday, final day of the week. Right, this week's gone fast. Um, hope you're having some joy in the market. It's been a bit choppy, isn't it, the last few days? This week in general, but um, there's a few things to look at today. So, let's get into my charts and I'll show you what what I can see. Right. Okay, so what do we have? Start off with top of the list, Aussie Cat. Weekly, sorry, the daily, it's been uptrend. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, still going. It is level, really good high test uh, Wednesday. Yesterday, very bearish day, so maybe we're going to keep on going down. What I've noticed also though is that this was a kind of a breakout from these highs. So maybe that's connected to some kind of support. Or maybe it's just going to keep on coming back down into the 2050 zone. MACD, what do we have? MACD divergence. You see this clearly a lot lower, implying it's losing momentum and maybe we are going to get some more downward action. So let's look at the hourly chart to see what that gives us. Well, what do we have here? Nice clean break of the one hour 50 through the four hour 50. Now, looking for a pullback to the one hour 50. Um, the reason I'm umming and ahhing about this one is because we've we are putting in lower highs and lower lows, and now we're putting in a slightly uh, higher low. And if we need a higher high as well to get an entry. So really that doesn't, that then tells us it's an uptrend. Um, and I like think D looks reasonable. Looks like we've got some pullback happening. Uh, yeah, so maybe I'll put that on my secondary list. But what we're looking for here is a pullback to the 1 hour 50 soon. Just a quick pullback, 382, 1 hour 50, and then take it short. Uh, so keep an eye on that one, but uh, not the best, as I just said. Okay, Aussie Swiss. Um, what have we got? Break, hit this support level, resistance level, bounce down through the daily 50. We're just going to continue. Looking at the weekly chart, we can see we've got a into the weekly 2050 zone and a very good projection of that zone. So maybe we're going to head lower. Uh, let's have a look at the hourly chart. Right, very bearish action for the last few days, plowing through the daily 50, this green line here. And now we're going to get, you could call this a complex pullback, perhaps a bit like Aussie Cad, not surprisingly. So do you count this as a, a change in trend or do you count this as a, a complex pullback? So that's for you to decide. It's not ideal because the 382, let's just do the 382 from here perhaps. No, it's got a, maybe it could do. On the break before our 50. That lines up then with the daily 50 and the um, hourly 50. And the fib, fib 382 as well. So that looks okay. Complex pullback, one, two, three, maybe. Not very clean, is it? But it's, it is what it is. Um, CBO probably wouldn't count if it only came back this far because the 4 50 is a fair way behind. It may have time to catch up a bit, but still. In the six or eight, maybe. If it does pull back a bit, you may want to shim the stop a little bit. Well, the fire fridge is acting with their protection. Uh, and then the price target will be I did a six or eight extension of this run. This is the big run here. If it pulls back here, if it only pulls back to here, even better. Six or eight is a bit further, a bit lower. I'm making the point put it down here somewhere. 
So that's what my price target would be. If this did pull back, there was a nice entry. So this fish looks okay. Was he, yeah. See lots of Aussies in there in the watch list today. Okay, so we've had a, an amazing, because of the yen action on Wednesday, the yen news, amazing high test, bearish day yesterday, looking for some more bearish action today. What do we have here then? We have uh, a very convincing downward trend there, pull back. Now there's no real good place to put our fib apart from the top. It hasn't really stopped all the way down. So let me just react to you right back here. So it's not really nice. It's not really going to count as a as a trade. Either way, if you come back for the four four hour fifty test and the three eight two, great. But we've then got to trade through the one hour fifty. So that really, I'll just put it there just for some talking points. But we, there's no real trade on for that one. Aussie Kiwi. Um, okay, rejection this level, lots of bearish action, and then a pullback and a retest of the daily 50. So is that a retest and to continue, break up through it as in the daily 50 zone, and then it's going to keep on coming up, or is that going to keep on going down? We'll look at the weekly chart, we can see weekly 20, weekly 50 has been tested and then rejected. So that's looking like maybe we are going to continue going down. Do we have any MACDs on here? No. So I'm suggesting we're going for a down day here because there's a break and a retest daily 50. Not particularly clear, but let's see what the hourly chart gives us, if anything. Uh, what's this crazy thing here doing? I'm not sure what that is. All right, so we have, well, that's what it was. It's just not clear, it's just hiding under here. Fib extension. Right, so our fibs line it quite well. Entry is about now. The one out, one out, of, one out of 50 and the 382 is lying out pretty nicely. This is with a fib drawn from the highs. We took it down a little bit lower to this spike here. Then that also lines up quite well. Maybe even better. If we enter the bit here. 4.50 is a little bit further behind, but we, you may want to, to trim your stop a little bit. We had that 4.50 protection. And we've even got the daily pivot um, R1 acting as protection as well. So that's all good stuff. If you enter here, by the time you see this video, it's probably gone. But that could be a trade down to 6.0 extension. And if it is, this is a little bit tricky. Oh, that's about right, isn't it? Yeah, then that could be a 2% one off of there. Okay, Aussie dollar, what do we have here? Okay, rejection of this level and kind of bearish day yesterday, although a little bit of a, a wick onto the daily 20. Is that all the pullback we're going to get? Maybe, maybe not. We look at the hourly chart and we can see. The Elliott wave is not very clear. If we do have this wave down, then a pullback. This is either a wave one or a wave three. Tricky, not clear. But either way, there's a wave five to continue, wave three or wave five. So we've had the pullback. 382 is not great, again, because of this huge strength here, or lack of. Um, so I was thinking if it did pull back and wick the one out, wick, wick the 382 to make the, the trade valid, and then you can enter here and it crosses back below the one hour 50 and the four hour 50. That'd be a nice little CBO. You could do the stops behind there, trade down to 30 50. That could be a nice little trade if you get that wick. Okay, you a Kiwi. The Kiwi kind of goes sideways and a very bullish day yesterday. Is that going to continue? There's a little bit of room up to maybe, maybe with the wick. Let's see what the outer chart shows us. And we can see again, well, this is probably a clear Elliott wave one, two, three, four, 
So that's four complex pullback. Big mess, isn't it? But a 382 pullback is here. If you do get a pullback to here, and uh, one hour 50 catch up, four hour 50 just behind it, with a day 20 there as well for protection. And a 618 protection there. And it's straight up to the S1 or so the R1, daily pivot R1, or these highs. So it could be a nice one, although this pullback is a little bit messy. Could you count as a wave one, two, three, four, five? You possibly could, in which case this trend is finished. So that's what I've used to decide. Let's see that it sets up. Pound Kiwi. Probably not too dissimilar to Euro Kiwi. Uh, very British day yesterday, breaking through the daily 50. Then that's got a bit more clear air above it. Um, it's been this trading range for quite a while. So it's not really good price action in general. The hourly chart shows us massive run up. Again, waiting for a pullback. Now, I like this one. I'll explain my Elliott wave, how I see it here. All right, I'm too much. Okay, so we start from down here. This is a wave one, pullback. Now we go into wave three. So wave three is composed of five waves. Wave one, two, wave three, pullback wave four, and wave five. That completes our wave three. And then we have our wave three pullback. And the 382 lines up really well with this one hour 50. So that'd be a great little... Although it's, it's quite a long run, it's still a nice looking setup as far as an IBO is concerned. Stop down here. Uh, yeah, the MACD looks good. So I pull back to 382, 1 hour 50 catching up. If this pulls back to down here, then that could be a great little one, or you could even take that as a, as a pip snatcher because the pivot's just here. If it breaks back through the pivot again, if it does pull back to the 1 hour 50, then take the quick one to one pip snatcher. So I like that one, though it looks a little bit unusual. Uh, Kiwi Swiss breaking down. Usually Kiwi Cad and Kiwi Swiss go together, very similar, but they are quite different today. So Kiwi Swiss looking for short after rejecting this level and breaking through the daily 50, although it is kind of sideways action, so not really that clear. And as far as the one hour chart is concerned, big one, two, and then we have a wave one, two, three, four, five, and a wave four pullback to a three, eight, two, and then a wave five short, down to a six, one, eight, five extension of this wave three. So that totally makes sense after my explanation on, what was it, Pound Kiwi, the Elliott Wave. Then um, that could be a pullback to here, then the trade down to 618, which is actually got 2% on the offer there, which is pretty good. Okay, Kiwi again. This is the yen, so I wonder why that's on here. I imagine it's a pretty crazy looking track, uh, chart. Yeah, huge high test. Very bearish day yesterday, but that big bearish day could be followed by another one. So let's have a look. We've got a bit of a pullback now. That's nice. And this will be a nice pitch snatcher. So we've got pivots lined up really well with this one. One hour 50 is just there, and the entry is about now for a, a pitch snatcher. Okay, let's get to the euro pound. These ones are setting up hopefully a little bit later today. Euro pound. Um, so is this a rejection of the daily 50 going long? Or looking at the weekly chart, is it a rejection of this level going short? That's what the early chart gives us. Yeah. So that, that doji to me looks like a reversal candle. But we need some proof of that. So we've still got lower highs, lower lows. We need to have a higher high, higher low. Uh, break this one hour 50 when it does pull back we can get an ibo long so maybe another setup for later on and the last one is kiwi cad which has had a breakout to this level which is the last highs here breakout pull back back and retest is that just a fake out and gonna go back lower again or is it going to go higher 
So let's see what the Audi chart gives us. And if it does go lower, that's fine. But I'm looking at if it does actually go long and break through the one hour 50 pullback, that gives us an IBO uh, long to continue this trend. So there we go. There's a, a few interesting things there. Just turn my screen share off if I do that. Come on, mind block. Um, let's just stop sharing. Right, okay, so a few things to look at. Uh, some nice, some not so nice, interesting. Friday, try and get out of the trade before close of business. I so would like to hold it over the weekend and take that risk. Otherwise, I uh, wish, wish you all the best in the markets. ScottProTrader.com if you want to sign up for free training and join us at ProTrader. And uh, I wish you a great weekend. So I'll, I'll catch up with you on Monday. All the best.